Hi everyone, this is Shamrandi from Life Design Topics. I hope that you guys have been enjoying the videos that I'm putting out. Um, the, the, the main focus of them is really about understanding our relationship that we have with ourselves, what contributes to that relationship that we have with ourselves. Um, what I do do is coaching for women. I've, I've actually been doing it for some years, right? Um, mentoring young women and things like that. So all of these different topics, um, they can be beneficial to individuals um, whole families to you know something that you think will resonate with a friend you want to pass it on um, things that even if you are are not if you feel like it doesn't necessarily like affect you directly or speak speak directly to like your own character it may guide you um, in understanding the sensi sensitivity that you should have when it comes to dealing with another individual this video is is a, is a touchy subject. It's a very, very touchy subject. I did warn ahead of time that the topics are getting salacious. They're getting risque. I try not to get political because I, I don't know, you know, enough about politics to even um, have like an opinion about it. But this, this might be kind of political. This is regarding to the church. Okay, in religion, not the church. Okay, so let me preface. Let me preface this this talk. This talk is going to speak about. It's going to make references to, to religion. It's going to make references to Christianity. Okay, because it's the only um, other uh, major religion I have participated in and have knowledge of. Um, I know very little about other religions, but I know some things of them, okay? I have friends that, you know, come from all walks of life, um, but I may not have necessarily, like, worshipped with them at length or studied their doctrine, okay? But this video is going to be about the black woman and religion, okay? And I say religion encompassing because some of this, may strike a chord with persons that have familiarity in other religions like not necessarily like the non-denominational non sect of christianity but you know there's just so many i mean there's some that I, I i consider them a religion but then when you hear about them being spoken on the the evening news they'll call them a cult okay i i remember that that was last year <laughs> something happened and they made reference to somebody that was, you know, they, they were Israelite. And they were referred to as a cult on a national news. I was fabric. I was like, what? Cult? Really? So I don't, I don't know what people call cults nowadays. What's a religion? What's a this? What's a that? Um, but I think in all of it, there's little bits and pieces that can edify all of us, right? We have to get to the place as humans, okay? And this is why this is why racism is never going to go away, okay? Because people forget to deal with other humans in the human race as humans. There is a, a famous saying that is said like the most uh, one of our like leaders from the past um, that the most segregated time of the week is Sunday morning at 11 a.m. It still is. It still is. Okay. It still is. Um, I could understand why. Okay. Because you have to understand the role of like what a pastor or a leader or uh, um, there's different names, right? Uh, overseer, like like the apostolic Christian faith, they call it, you know, they, they have names like overseer and things like that. You know, that person that individual is going to speak upon topics and in a way that's going to relate to um, the majority of what his congregation reflects, okay? And it will come across as insensitive for somebody to speak about a culture that they're not familiar with, right? So that's, you know, that's why it is. But my concern is, you know, my concern is always like, how are women treated in the process of everything? Um, women, we, we know that women are not always, um, you know, treated well, right? Regardless if it's religion or something else that we're talking about. And many religions are very 
patriarchal. Did I say that correctly? Yeah, I, I believe I did. Like it is, it is like male centered, male dominated. Okay. Um, even the way that I was brought up in my mind, I observed God as a male, right? Like a male energy. Um, but as life progresses and amazing spiritual experiences happen in a woman's life, right? So let me segue quickly. I encourage women to, if you feel like you are somebody that's easily impressionable, then maybe it's not for you. Stick to what it is that you know. But for the sake of like not having ignorance and also to allow the spiritual realm to really work for you in as much capacity as you can handle. It'll it'll do you a good it do you good to know about other things and know about other religions and just to, to be knowledgeable about it and how things are seen, okay? All right. So because it's such a, a patriarchal type of religion that I myself I see my higher uh, my higher spiritual energy as a male energy, okay? But with that being said, depending on what it is that I need in my life, let's just say for an instance, I was in the situation that I was seeking spiritual help to have a baby. Let me just use that as an example. Then I could, I could look at um, the higher spiritual being as a caring father or a loving mother that can that can sympathize with my need. I want the fruit of the womb, right? I'm gonna have my own kids, right? So, for Black women, we have just been so discouraged from finding out about what else is out there, right? How does this apply to me? How did? Because we're in the diaspora, right? So, like, how did this affect my ancestors? Not, not my ancestors that, <laughs> not, <laughs> cause maybe even some of them, they found, they found a way to still honor it, right? That's where religions or followings such as Vudan and Voodoo and things like that come from because people had to cloak it under the guise of what would have been acceptable for the, for the, um, the higher society, right? You're talking about, you know, Africans that are enslaved, Okay, and for them, for the process of the enslavement to happen, they had to be taught a doctrine for them to follow, right? So that's where my bucking started. It's like, I still, you know, once I still go to church, I went to church today, hence this frock, right? But, you know, my enlightenment and my thought process has changed so much over the past decade or so. By the time, you know, I had completely stopped going to church at one point, and then I started going to church again when I was pregnant with my oldest son, but it wasn't like just a regular church. I, you know, I had a cousin that traveled to the States, and she um, was participating in a program at a church, and I attended, and my heart felt at home, and since then, I've always had a an African pastor. Okay, somebody that um, was raised, um, you know, their whole mind. Like, I've always had like an African pastor. Okay, so since then. So since I've moved from that state and I moved to another state, I found another congregation that I felt at home with. Okay, keep in mind that a lot of things about my lifestyle also was changing in this process, like the business that me and my ex-husband were doing. You know, a lot of our client base was were West African, not not only West African, all kinds of Africans, but most of our client, our regular repeated client base was West African. So there was just such a comfort, right? This to me, in my opinion, there's like a level of like moral morale standard that I can automatically expect. Okay, and it's something that I also notice even with Caribbean people. Okay, um, like let's just say I'm like out at night somewhere or I'm lost somewhere. If I saw a, a group of individuals and you know persons in the group, you know they looked 
they had like a very vernacular look to them. Like I could tell they're either like a, Car a Caribbean or they're an African. I'm going to, I'm going to automatically be lying to them and ask them a question because I know that, you know, there was just like a, an internal moral campus that like, I already know that my heart is safe. That's just my opinion, right? I'm just telling you my view. Um, but I don't want to like, you know, let us like lose this. And I, I really, really want to get into this. This has been on my heart heavy. I want to say no less than two weeks. I even uh, told um, the unfit Christian, if you don't follow her, honey, you need to get on that. Okay. She's an amazing, amazing um, woman she has a great following on social media and you know and she always talks she she she, she makes fun of and cop you know th th there's a humor attached but it really speaks to like something that many of us want to say right but we're like forbid like we're forbidden that's not okay to do it and for me my love for women and women understanding for them to know who they are for them to see themselves as the gods that they are, for them to see themselves as the goddesses that they are. Um, just these amazing, amazing, amazing beings. It's like, it's like it, some of it gets taken away from us. Even us wanting to rest in our femininity, that gets taken away from us, right? Because we are, we are told to not be vain. <laughs> we are told to uh, to not acknowledge self, to not praise ourselves. There's actually a Bible scripture, uh, Proverbs 27. It says, don't praise yourself. Let others do it, right? And, you know, in self-praise and there not being any recognition in it, I understand where that comes from because the book of Proverbs just has so much great, you know, <sighs> Just, it just has so much great content for us to take in and ways for us to live our life in it, okay? But at the same time, we're in 2020, right? We're in 2020. We're in a time where, you know, um, a black woman's body is hypersexualized. Many black women are discovered from even nurturing the babies as they should and have babies naturally and breastfeed, right? Um... There are many of us, believe this or not, this may not apply to you, but I have physically met people that believe that the breast of a black woman is for the sexual gratification of a man. No, that's to nurse a baby. Like, it has a purpose, right? And in some cultures, it's like, we're not overly sexualized. We're acknowledged, right? We are heads of state, right? Um, we are ministers in countries. We are presidents right and we're still mothers and we're still respected wives okay wife wives plural some of us have sister wives right in my in my mind i don't think there's anything i, I i'm not one of those people to say oh they are wicked because they choose to live a, a, a poly type of lifestyle okay um i believe that plurality is okay if it is for the right reasons right so, um, you know, back on this particular scripture, it's like, okay, don't praise yourself, let others do it. All right, in the current dating, the dating climate of it all, right, where women are just so hypersexualized, it's like we are, you know, many women, they don't even feel that they're valuable if they don't have a small waist. OK, if they themselves weren't, you know, um, they didn't inherit, you know, a particular look um, They They feel like they have less um, attract attraction value if they do not look like they are multiracial. It's just it's just a whole lot of all of those things. Right. And you have to find your place in the world. You have to find your place even in the world of, you know, dating and, and, and cohabitating and starting a family and finding a partner to have a family with. You know, you, you want to make sure that two of you are on the same are on the same path. Like you're like, you know, yoked, yoked with the same trajectory in mind. It's so important. Speaking about like not being yoked correctly, um, religion forces a lot of us. God, I'm so glad for that segue. Religious for religion forces a lot of us to um, eventually wait in a long suffering stance for a marriage that the other person doesn't want. Now, you would say, "Oh, he wants it, or he's not ready." But sis, if you're sitting engaged 
five years, four years, eight years, a decade, never getting married, you're just having children, um, you know, there isn't like a marriage to kind of like solidify the basis. For many of us, we look at it as, uh, you know, where does the child see themselves coming from? <sighs> Listen, you, you're going to have to, you're going to have to just like realize that some of it is witchcraft. <laughs> some of it is not meant with your best intention in mind. Sorry. Yeah, you'll have to realize that um, some of it is not happening with with the best intention in mind. And it's just unfortunate. I, I feel that because I, I have tons of guy friends and, you know, when I listen to a lot of this type of dialogue, there is just a thing to be said when a man, like, finds a woman that he is like truly truly like you know he is that's what he wants I will admit you know men have approached me like that and it's scared I'm like running off like a little deer <laughs> I'm like gone you know they're they're over there like getting to a certain you know on social media and I am not having it I am I'm not okay with it. You know, I'm like, oh, no, no, no. You will not come to me with that. And and I know where that comes from, right? But you yourself, I'm going to say it is so important for black women to understand the importance of seeing their own value. See your value, praising yourself. I know what you're taught. I know what religion teaches us. But is it the healthy thing? No, it's not. Because think about it, right? Everything... Everything without moderation is unhealthy. Everything. Okay? If you if you are listening to a doctrine and then in turn you then have to maneuver yourself in the landscape of being a single woman and you have to navigate dating. Imagine you being in a place where you don't know to praise yourself. Then you're gonna you're gonna have self esteem issues. You're gonna have self esteem issues. The f crap happens to you all the time. You're just not even you're not even gonna understand the importance of you knowing your value. Religion contributes to that, right? Us building a home where we should pitch a tent. We meet a great guy. Um, we have fun. We think okay, we're having fun now. We could have fun for the next thirty eight years of our life, right? For him, it may just be for the next eight months of your life, okay? Or the next eight months, eight days, eight weeks of your life. And it, it's told, it's, what happens is that it ends up being frowned upon where you're upset that he doesn't want to have a commitment to you. And remember, like your mindset, because a lot of what happens to us happens with programming that we were indoctrinated with. A lot of it started before we even reached the age of eight, okay? And it just continues on in our life. So, you know, with that said, it's like what will happen is like the level of interest from the other party, it's like it's already waned a bit. It's like, okay, they don't have any interest. No, but you still want to go full on charging, right? To make it to the altar, to have children. Some people think that they think that's the way to hold on to a relationship is to have a baby, inject a baby. I know things have changed, praise God. You know what I mean? Over the past couple of decades. But, you know, years ago, probably even like, you know, up to recently, people thought that was okay. They thought that was the way to like, uh, to get the life that they wanted or get the relationship that they wanted. And then, you know, what you do is really just perpetrate like a bad cycle. An unhealthy cycle, you know. Um, there's some groups that I'm in, and I, I love making reference to them because it is just like situations and real time action. And there was a post I saw one day. I want to say there was about like a hundred people. A hundred people made a comment, including myself. And the post was, "What what, what would be one thing you know that you did?" that um in in your past relationships that you regretted you know that you regret doing and 
I went, me, I was, I went and I studied this post. I went, I looked at every single comment. I want to say about five of those comments um, were like a little different, right? They veered off and they said, oh, I wish, you know, uh, we didn't like live together or whatever the case may be. I wish we like kept our, you know, they had different reasons for it. But let me tell you, 90 something percent of those women on that post, they said, this is like, you're talking more than 90 women, okay? Out of a poll of 100 women. And more than 90 women said, one or two things. A, they overstayed their stay in a relationship, okay? They should have, like, not stayed as long as they did, you know? And then they regret that they did that. In whatever variation, that's all it boiled down to. It boiled down to, I was in a connection with someone, all the terrible things that happened in the process, but I wish that I was strong enough to leave sooner, um, I wish that I ended it. I wish that I ended it sooner. I wish that um, I dated other people simultaneously at the same time. Like it really all boiled down to them making permanent decisions in a temporary in a temporary atmosphere. And that's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. I don't usually hear men have that kind of regret, you know, because men are just hardwired. Hi, guys. You know, men are just hardwired to be really, really self-serving. They can't help themselves, okay? They they have not had, they don't have, the, they don't have the same chemical makeup as we do as women. And because they do not have the same chemical makeup as we do as women, it affects us as women, as black women, on like how, you know, religion affects us right? There are things that we should be tapping into and how we should see ourselves and know that we're enough and know that, you know, our ancestors are, are present, right? To know that our ancestors are present, they are, they, they are doing what they can on, on our behalf, right? That we need to see ourselves a certain way, okay? Because at the end of the day, a pastor, many of them have an amazing spiritual gift, to be able to help people to come to understandings and guide them and how to study the word and, you know, the holy writ for, for Christians is the Bible, you know, or, you know, in Islam, it you know, it's the Quran. It, it's like they can guide us, right? That's all they can do is guide us. You got to think about it like if you're a mother and you have a child, yeah, up to a certain age, you could tell that child what to do. Okay, but then after the child then becomes a teenager, now it's like you, you're not really, it's like it's not concrete. Now it's like you're a consultant, <laughs> you know, you're a consultant that they refer to, but they make their own decisions. You have no control of what's going on when they're not in your eyesight. You just have to hope that you raise them well. It's the same thing with Christianity that is taught properly, religion that is taught correctly. You know, there's a saying I remember, I'm getting goosebumps now thinking about it because I didn't think about this and it wasn't in my notes, was, um, you know, there's some leaders in uh, the American Islam, the Nation of Islam, um, Reverend uh, Minister Farrakhan, and I remember him saying one day, and, and also somebody actually from his organization that converted to Christianity full time, I heard that individual say that, this is when I used to go to the church I went to in Boston, and is that a good Muslim is a good Christian, and a good Christian is a good Muslim, right? But religion and religiosity and, you know, um, dogmatic religious religion will have you under the impression and under the mindset that everything outside of whatever is being taught to you in your groups is automatically wicked. It's automatically of the devil. I'm going to tell you something. When I was coming up, I remember, you know, being a child of the 90s. I remember the music that was coming out. I remember watching all the award shows. I remember seeing, like, the Puff Daddies and, you know, the, the gentlemen from the FUBU and all of this. And they'll come out and, and, and they'll, like, acknowledge God. And in my mind, because I was so young, you know, like, what I was taught was people that drink liquor, they don't have God in their life, right? People that don't go to church regularly, they don't have God in their life, right? Like all of that stuff is for play play. And that is just so incorrect, right? It's so incorrect, so wrong. And life teaches you that that is wrong. 
You know, life teaches you that that is wrong. And I want you to find your own truth, right? If you have a great husband, if you have a great husband, I want you to know that um, if you go to church regularly and your husband does not join in with you to go to church and he is a, a great husband, you and him have a great, you know, a partnership and um, it's a partnership that you totally like respect, then you want to make sure that you're giving your husband respect, regardless of how high of an esteem you hold your religious leader in, right? The pastor, the imam, the, the bishop, the priest, whoever, right? Like, he, does, he doesn't get a different level of respect that your own husband at home isn't getting. If, if, if you're in that type of relationship and that kind of marriage, right? Because everybody has, everybody has different kind of relationships, Right, there's this, this is a misconception that you have to be wifey material. Listen, that is a big crock of nonsense, right? I, I, I'm not gonna get into breaking that all the way down, but anybody's marriage material. As long as you got the money for the marriage license and that person wants to marry, you can be a sex worker for all that, for all everybody else cares. That's not gonna stop you from being a wife, right? When people say married, you know, wifey material, listen, that is just a whole nother, like, enchilon and expectation that they want to have and to, you know, um, what is the word that I'm looking for? You know, where, you know, an elitist, like an elitist type of group that you need to be a part of, listen, you could be married to anyone that you and them have great respect for each other. Who cares what kind of life he was living before and what kind of life you were living before? It really doesn't even matter. What matters is that you want to be married to that person and that person wants to be married to you. Notice I didn't say like, oh, that man wants to marry that woman, that woman wants to marry that man. People got all kinds of relationships going on and none is less important than the other, right? True committed relationships because one thing that I have learned in my grown woman age is that love is is, is about bravery, okay? Like right now, I know I am not in the season of, you know, getting myself involved in a, 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 an all-encompassing relationship. I understand how important and how involved the relationships are, right? So I know that's not a task I'm supposed to take on in this current season of my life. But I know people that are in love, all kinds of friends, I have all kinds of friends, and they are all finding, they are finding their love. And I am just so proud out of them because I know it takes bravery, right? For you to be vulnerable and to be able to accept somebody, you know, where they are in life and to build a life with them and to want to walk together in a partnership and that person has your back and you have that person's back, right? But black women, listen. <sighs> take, your, take the time to educate yourself. Take the time and do the research of your background. Know who your people are. Try to figure out if you know where you come from. I know there's many, there is an entire demographic of people that live in on the East Coast around like the Maryland, Baltimore area. And if you have done research in the past and you know what happened uh, during, um, during the time when slavery was rampant, there was such a loss of family structure, granted if there was one that made it here to the shores of North America, okay? And many have found a true sense of community in Islam, in, um, you know, in different relig religions and sects, right? Rastafarianism, um, um, you know, the black, black Jews, right? Um, Israelites and, and things like that. And really that's what church is. That's what synagogue is. That's what temple is. That's what, you know, the, the mosque is. It's, it's really boils down to community, right? I, I remember I was working through some things and I take a major, major break from going to church. And one thing that I did try, probably not as often as I wanted to, is I still went to go and volunteer. Why? Because 
it was still a community of women that I held, I hold in high regard, right? And I and and I know that if they have a task to do, many hands make light work, right? That's a, a great West India Guyanese uh, adage, right? Many hands make light work. So I they're still my community, regardless, because I don't go to another church, right? It's the church, it's that group that I, you know, I participate in, and then just me, you know, on my lonesome between me and Alua. Every single day, I, I, I wake up to only praise him. I do, you know, and that has helped me. It's kept me, right? But I also know the power of being able to be in other places and, and to praise my you know, my creator, right? I, I understand that from many, our creator takes many forms, right? Spirit takes many forms. Universe takes many forms. He has many, many names. And it is, it is dogmatic doctrine that taught us that anything outside of that one is evil and it doesn't even exist. And it, and, and it's so unfortunate, right? Because it would have done many of us a lot of good to know that okay if we're if we're christian and you know we believe in, the, in 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 jesus christ and we follow jesus christ for you to know that you know christ still exists even in islam right he's still regarded his mother is regarded the mosque that uh minister farrakhan usually gives his lectures at is i think it's called mosque Maryam, right they talk about that. They do not ignore or forsake the acknowledgement of who Jesus Christ is, right? So it'll behoove you to know. 